Hello, I'm going to take you on a quick run through of iTest 4.0. It's really intended for people who have never seen iTest before at all. Um, iTest 4.0 has a lot of new stuff uh, complete, uh, compared with the previous versions. Um, we're going to take you through the new user activity based user interface in 4.0 and walk through um, a fairly simple scenario. To give you a, a big picture view of iTest 4.0, though, you'll see that the activities view tells you about five different top-level activities that you might be performing. Launching sessions is really using iTest just as a way of using the variety of tools that are integrated with iTest um, interactively. So suppose if you're doing testbed setup or you're trying to reproduce some bugs or just interacting with your routers in general or other kinds of devices or applications, then you can launch sessions using iTest and uh, iTest will make that easy and will also give you some benefits as you do it. New to iTest 4.0 is the ability to build topologies, uh, visual topologies, so you can now create um, diagrams of your test beds, and those can be abstract or physical test beds, and in fact you can interact with those, um, those test beds and devices from within that context. Perhaps the thing that iTest is most famous for is actually developing automated test cases, and so develop a test case is a workflow that will step you through that whole process to create um, fairly sophisticated test cases that involve many different kinds of uh, tools. Of course, in a test automation environment, being able to go see what's going on with test reports is essential, and so whether you are running tests yourself or you're looking at tests uh, that have been executed by others in your team, this is an activity that you can do from within iTest itself. And finally, there's the notion of a workspace. A workspace is a, uh, a directory on your own machine that has your work, that directory or parts of it. The projects can be uh, integrated and uh, you can work with others on your team by having some of the projects in your workspace connected via version control. So we'll show you a little bit of each of these now. Let's start with launching sessions. It's certainly nice that with a few button clicks in iTest, I can say I'd like to start a session to router 10, for example. And with just those button clicks, there I go. I've got a session. Okay. But it's not only about uh, Telnet sessions. Suppose that same device has a web interface on it. Well, then that is my router 10. I want to access it via HTTP. And this has the need for credentials, so let's enter those. And we can go ahead and start a web session to that router. Now, you'll notice that iTest can actually bring up um, screenshots, so that as I'm doing this and I want to create a record, I've got all the information in one place. But I can use a whole variety of additional tools as well. You'll see things like a tickle shell, where I can interact with libraries and other tools that I have available via Tickle, command prompts, and so forth. So for all of these tools, traffic generators, specialized tools, generic vanilla tools, um, I can access these with a few button clicks and be working. As I do this, it's very valuable that I can also ask iTest to generate a capture report for me. So this will give me a sequence of everything that's happened since I entered this activity. And this might be something that I want to do so that I can now pass this information that has been collected onto someone else. So for example, if I found something strange in one of these router responses, I could attach this capture report to a, to a bug report. And there you have launch sessions. Simple, but very effective. Now let me go back to the top level activity, and you'll see that Fanfare has cleaned everything up so that I'm ready to start my next activity. Suppose that next activity is building a topology. So building a topology is easy as saying I've got a name for my topology. And now you'll see a very nice visual editor. Suppose I have two routers and I want to interconnect those routers with, let's call it a couple of ports. I might have a traffic generator and I'd like to interconnect that 
with a couple of my devices. And maybe I want to add some extra information. So I can start building fairly sophisticated um, topologies right here within it. And you'll see that these little X's tell me, hey, if you want iTest to work with this topology, then you're going to need to tell us how we can connect to it. Well, let's suppose that that traffic generator I don't right now need to connect to it. And let's add a session for this router, which we'll say I'll connect to that router with Telnet. I'd really like to take advantage of some other work that's gone on, and I have a library that knows about this router, so I'll do that. And I'm ready to save that. And for now, let's just say I don't need any sessions on the other router. So now I've got a topology. While I'm working with this topology, of course, I can just start sessions right here. So there's a Telnet session, and you'll see that it's even auto-logged me in because of the fact that I know about this device. So we can start sessions from there, come back, start additional sessions if we choose, and so forth. Okay. So that's the topology design. Get a nice visual experience. iTest is going to help you through any of the challenges of getting it set up so that iTest knows how to use it. And there's lots of sophisticated capabilities here in terms of naming and numbering things. So if I want to change the name of this router to TR2, it's as easy as click. And if I want to change information, for example, about the names of the ports, maybe this is FA101, then it's as easy as adding uh, and editing text here. So now I've got a topology editor. Let me save those changes. Next on my list is to develop a test case. I'm not going to take you into a lot of detail here, but let's create a new test case from scratch. And I'll pick uh, a topology instead of the one I just created. Let me use a topology that is coming from a project that I've gotten from a teammate. So here's a test case. In fact, in this test case, we can look at its topology, three routers with a traffic generator, Let's go ahead and add some information into this. So I will start a session to this router with Telnet. And a nice feature in iTest is that if there are extra functions available for this router, I'll see them in this quick call list. Check port stats. It'll tell me what can I enter here. I'll check for port 23. Yes, that's looking fine. And so forth. I can come back to my session, start another session, maybe an SNMP session to this router, pull up its system information, get its interface table. And at this point, perhaps we have enough information for our test case. So I'll take those captured steps and use them to prototype up my test case. Now we have a very readable test case. Open a session via Telnet to router 2. Log in. Command show interface counters. Then check this port stats. Open SNMP to router 1. Walk its system table. Get its interface table. OK. All right. So now we're all set. I'd like to add some analysis to this test. You can see we have no analysis rules yet in the test. Let's add one. Okay, so let's go and check the interface counters on this. Now I could go and pick some information out here, but regular expressions aren't very good with dealing with tables, and in fact we have access to all of this information in a structured form, so we could go, for example, get the in unicast packets by port. And let's say I want to pick up the t port 24. You'll see a nice readable name here so that I can extract the data I want. I want to check to make sure it's greater than a certain value. And now we've added analysis into our test case. 
So you can see that iTest is starting to nest the analysis under the steps. I com issue a command, show interface counters, then I analyze that command by querying the results and doing an assertion on it. Likewise, this nesting can happen indefinitely. So for example, I might choose to decide uh, that what I want to do is to insert a step here and this is uh, set up router 2 and let's go nest those steps under that and now this is a way I can organize my test case so let's uh, add another comment set up router 1 and nest its steps now you can see that I've got a nicely organized test case with analysis. What do I want to do? Well, I'd like to see if it really works, so let's execute it. Okay, looks like my first uh, analysis is working fine. Now my SNMP is running. Okay, my test case is passed. I can see some analysis in there. Let's go ahead and get more details. Okay, here's my whole test case, and I can see first I queried port 24. My check port stats has some analysis in it. Let's find out about that. Uh, to check its stats, it's using a show interface counters, analyzing, and check to make sure the port that's passed into it is as a value of unicast packets greater than zero. So I can dig into my test case as much as I want, or view it at the topmost level. Now, I'm looking at um, this test case. I'm wondering what have I executed on it. Well, I can see that I've executed this test case uh, on this machine. I've executed a couple of test cases today. And so here's what I see. But I can also go all the way back to top level activities and say I'd like to look at all of the test reports. So here, you'll now notice that I'm fetching test reports from a test report database. And this is now a centralized test report database in iTest 4.0, where in this case, we have one here at Fanfare, which is, has 460,000 test reports in it um, that we run our own regression systems on. And I can now look back historically and see, well, in fact, right now, as I'm executing this, our own internal report uh, regression system, which is running continuously, is executing lots and lots of fanfare tests. But suppose that I just want to look at what's happening on my own machine. So here I can see that I've only executed a few test cases on this machine, and I could look back and find out about them, for example. So here's a report from 405 today. I can find out what happened, jump to a specific step, and this becomes a very effective way for me to find specifically what I'm working on. In addition, if I'm looking at the overall reports where there is no host, that means I'm going to take everything, then I also have the benefit of, of uh, grouping. So in this case, we happen to run our things with tags so that I can now go say, gee, I'd like to find out what happened on a specific uh, group. In this case, we use our change sets as group numbers and I can find out what happened, for example, on all of our Windows testing in the past week. Well, here's all the tests that have run, and I can see when they ran, yesterday, various times. I can look at all of those. And, for example, if I only wanted to see any failures, I can immediately pop those up, open a test report, and see what is going on with that failure. So here's a response not ex containing what I had expected. So this now new centralized test reporting system in iTest 4.0 is going to make it much easier for teams to work together, for example, pulling information from uh, centralized regression tests and being able to quickly navigate and triage down to, uh, to the original cause. Okay, finally, manage workspace. For those who are familiar with iTest, 3.4, you'll find this quite familiar. iTest Explorer is a way to navigate through all the files in your workspace. And you can, of course, work directly from here to go open files or review them or make all other sorts of organizational changes that you like. 
You'll also notice that this project is under version control because of this these um, little icons here. And iTest 4.0 makes it very easy for teams to now start collaborating via version control. So I can use a new import mechanism to use project sets. And there's uh, other demos on this that will show you how to very easily um, let people connect to the same version control system and be operating in very similar workspaces using that mechanism. Also, it's as easy as now using the team menu here to go make any updates or changes that, uh, that you want to to these projects. So for example, if I had made a change in here, I could commit those changes or get the latest updates and so forth. So version control is now nicely integrated into iTest in both directions. Now, for those who are familiar with iTest 3.4, you may find this new user interface quite a, ch quite a big change, and it is. This user interface that is activity-based is meant for people really coming up to speed with iTest and performing the, the normal workflows. But for those advanced users, they may prefer to use other kinds of perspectives in iTest. And if you're familiar in particular with iTest 3.4, you may choose to use a perspective that looks more traditional, where I have a set of files that I'm working on, my favorites view, and so forth. And all of the original user interface is still there for those who want to take advantage of it. But for those who want to work in the new way, that's very easy, easy to do. Well, that's a quick run through for iTest 4.0. Uh, there's more details in some of the other demos, but that gives you an idea of the, uh, the top-level workflows that we focus on. Thanks for listening.